thanks to everyone for joining us. It's great actually to, to be able to tell people about the new programme um, because it is a new programme. Uh, in September, it will be the, the, the first time that the, the programme actually runs. So it's uh, exciting times for, uh, for all. Um, just checking now, hopefully I have the uh, screen sharing. So uh, I'm aware one or two of you may have been in the arts talk. Uh, if you are, I only had three slides in there, right? So you'll only see three slides that are, that are similar. Um, uh, but for those who aren't, I'm, I'm of course just going to go go over everything. So first of all, psychology in terms of what it is, it's a scientific study of the mind and behaviour. So when we have a degree dedicated towards studying psychology, that's why it's a BSc, a Bachelor of Science. OK, now let's think about that scientific study. What does science try to do? Science tries to establish cause and effect. So an effect might be the way that you think in certain situations. Are you able to concentrate for long periods? Do you get stressed out? Do you worry about things? OK, um, it might be the way you feel. So it might be uh, feeling uncomfortable or it might be feeling nervous or it might be feeling in love or a whole range of different emotions. Or it might be the behaviour. It might be actually what you do. Um, do you kind of move yourself towards the front and centre in group situations or do you retreat and, and sit in the background? If you get into an argument with someone, do you kind of assert yourself or do you back down? And all of those are essentially effects, they're outcomes, thinking, feeling and acting outcomes. So what we want to do is understand what causes that? Why do people think, feel and act in that manner? So over the next kind of 20 minutes, um, I'm going to answer two main questions. Why you should study psychology? And once we've well, once we've addressed that, why an MIC? Now, in terms of why I believe you should study psychology, and I'm biased, right? it's a fantastic area to get into. Now, people automatically think about um, the thing you study leading to potential careers. And we know that psychology, as well as a scientific subject, is a profession. You can go and be a psychologist. And if you wanted to be a psychologist, there's so many different areas you can work in. You could be a clinical psychologist who works in health. OK, so when people suffer from um, personality disorders, schizophrenia, major depressive disorder, um, bipolar disorder, any any number of those kind of things, you help support that person um, to to get better. You might be interested in educational and child psychology. Uh, you might be interested in sort of special educational needs and autism spectrum disorder and those kind of things. You might also be interested in getting into forensic psychology. So you know where uh, you might have to make assessments over the sanity of individuals who commit crimes and those kind of things. Uh, you might be interested, as of my background, sport and exercise psychology. Um, so I'm interested in performance. I'm really interested not in so much um, what's wrong with people, but how can you maximise your opportunities um, to achieve as much as you can out of life? Uh, you might be interested in organisational and business elements of psychology. You might be interested in counselling. And all of those routes are open, OK, really good careers. But actually, despite the graduate employability being really good from psychology degrees, probably about 70% of graduates don't go on and become psychologists. Why is that? Because you can go and work in any area. Because psychology is about understanding people. So you can go work in human resources, you can work in marketing, you can work in advertising, you can work in business, you can work in charities. Because if you understand people and you understand why people think, feel and act how they do, then 
pretty much any job related to people um, has a psychological element. There is psychology in everything that we do. Even for those who go into teaching or go and work for a fire service or become a guard or understanding people is a huge component of all of that. And that's why psychology is actually an incredibly popular program of study. Um, now, unfortunately, in Ireland, and this is part of the driver why this course exists, there's a lot more people that want to study psychology than there are places on courses that offer psychology. And this is why we were so keen to get this program ready, because it is a good subject to study. Lots of people want to study it. So we're trying to provide something for people to be able to do that. Now, in terms of what you would study when you do so, so we're interested in understanding why people think, feel and act how they do. OK. Now, there's five broad areas that every psychology program will have. And that's personality, individual differences, social psychology, developmental psychology, biological psychology and cognitive psychology. And they're all different approaches to understanding why people think, feel and act as they do. So personality and individual differences. Intuitively, you, you know a little bit about what that is, right? Because you have a personality and everybody you've ever met has a personality. Um, and equally, people are different. So my interest, uh, I'm interested in personality and mental toughness and how people manage stressful situations. And that started when I when I was working as a sports psychologist, being in the dressing room before a really big match, you can see everybody, despite being in the same situation, everybody's having a completely individual experience based on who they are, okay? Some people are more resilient. Some people are very sensitive. Some people are really ambitious. Some people are a bit more happy-go-lucky. Some people find being the center of attention really draining. Whereas other people love it and actually don't like being alone. So these are personality traits. These are characteristics that we can understand people and we can predict their behavior in certain situations. Then the social psychology. So an example I gave in the arts talk um, I'll give again there is think, think about um, racism. OK, people hold racist attitudes. Why? That's not part of their personality. You're not born with a genetic predisposition towards being racist. People are influenced by the societies that they grow up in and their experiences. So there's a whole bunch of studies in social psychology that looks at things like group dynamics, how we can be influenced by um, culture and rewards and punishment and those kind of things um, around us. And it's no coincidence then that people from uh, communities consider themselves to have a community identity that's separate from other people. Developmental psychology looks at the lifespan. So right from where our brain starts to develop, um, which happens within the first few weeks of, uh, of the, the fetus developing, um, right through to um, the other end of life and with working with older people. We have this lifespan where our capacity to understand language, to express that language, our intellect, um, our capacity to be able to interact with other people changes across the lifespan. And it's really, really useful to understand those changes so we can start to intervene and, and help people kind of get to where they want to be. From the biological perspective, we, we have to recognise, of course, the brain is incredibly complex. So you'll know that there's different areas of the brain, different lobes. You might have heard of things like prefrontal cortex or amygdala or parietal lobe or occipital lobe, those kind of things. We don't do left brain, right brain. That's just a myth. That's not an actual true thing. Um, so obviously understanding the brain as an organ and what these different regions are, are responsible for and how having a certain amount of grey matter in a particular area 
or a neurotransmitter, which is like a, uh, a nervous impulse of a, a hormone, essentially. If that gets trapped in a synapse, like a gap in the brain, it, it affects the way we feel in a certain way. And that has an impact on, on our overall mood. We can also look at things from a cognitive point of view. So cognitive is about processing information, storing memories, so many different memories that we have. So you have things like procedural memories, knowing how to do things in a certain order, getting dressed in the morning, tying your shoelaces, those kind of things, or drive it. We have um, declarative memories, being able to recite facts, something that no doubt you'll be learning for the, the leaving cert. Um, we also have things like episodic memories, and they're really interesting because it's it's not uh, an episodic memory isn't necessarily a true reflection of what happened in the past, but it's the story we we build around an experience. So I, I to give you a, a personal example, I have a sister that's eleven months older than me. We grew up in the same house, yet when we talk about our childhood, our memories of it are completely different from each other because the way that we've developed those memories are different because we're different people. Now, all of that um, is about gaining knowledge of stuff. And how do we gain knowledge? Through research. Okay? And that's what research methods are about, trying to identify that cause and effect. So there's a strong element there where you'll come up with uh, research ideas. Maybe there's lots of things, and there are a lot of things, that we don't really know. And we don't understand why people do what they do. But we can try and figure that out. And that's all part of the fun. And that's what we do with research methods. Now, hopefully I've convinced everyone that psychology is a fantastic subject um, to, to study. Uh, so why should you do it at MIC? Well, I'm going to reflect on some of the reasons why, why I think uh, we what we offer here is, is a really good option. Um, I'll firstly just point out that there's three programmes that have psychology on an undergraduate level here. So that's degree level, right? Level eight. And uh, there's the BSc, but there's also the Bachelor of Arts and the Bachelor of uh, Education in Education and Psych. OK, they're both joint honours degrees. Um, a lot of the subjects are shared. So on a lot of the modules, you'd be um, in, in people on those other two programmes as well. There are some modules typically at least one or two every semester that would just be for the, the BSc in psychology. Now, I, I can anticipate one question that's going to be asked a lot, accreditation, OK? Uh, so currently, both of our joint honours programmes, the BA and the BEd Ed and Psych, are both accredited um, with the Psychological Society of Ireland. And you can go on and get on to any master's degree that somebody who's studied just straight psychology can do. We're submitting for accreditation in the next couple of months for the, the BSc psychology, but it can't officially be accredited until it starts running. OK, so I suspect during your first year on the programme, it will gain accreditation. As long as it gains accreditation and um, by the time you graduate, then you can um, become a, a graduate member of the Psychological uh, Society as long as you get a certain grade in the degree, which is true of all accredited psych courses. OK, so that's the plan with that. Given that the two courses that have slightly less psychology in them are accredited, I don't really see any issues uh, in terms of gaining the accreditation for this one. Now, what is it that's bespoke about this course? Um, we study both the scientific subject of psychology, but also the psychology of humans. OK, not just the scientific subject, but the applied aspect of psychology. Um, and I think this is incredibly useful. Uh, and this comes from being a student myself many, many years ago, 16 years of lecturing. Um, a frustration I always have with a lot of psychology degrees is that you get into them because you're interested in in people, right? You're interested in why people think, feel and act as they do. And sometimes that gets lost because it's so much. It's about learning particular theories and research methods and statistics and those kind of things that certainly are really important and they're robust and they have to be part of a, 
uh, an accredited program. But you don't necessarily do the, the bits that allow you to apply that in the real world, to actually see what working with people, trying to understand them, trying to make changes. That's the stuff that like, is, is really interesting. So I do a lot of research in psychology, but at the point of the research is to gain knowledge that can hopefully have a positive effect. So I also like to do the, the, the small p psychology, you know, without the capital letter. It's not just about studying a subject, but it's about doing psychology as well. And we're able to do that because it's a four year programme. Now, there are some three year programmes out there and we thought about doing a three year programme. But to gain accreditation, it would largely have been a study of the scientific subject of psychology. By having the programme over four years, I think it brings it back more to the, the interest in, in people. So I'll give you a little bit of an overview of the structure now. Depending on the size of screen you've got in front of you, I, I can't guarantee how clear this uh, the, this will be. Um, but it, look, it's available online, and you can you can find the information. Um, here's the structure of the course. Okay, in the in the first year, you can see that you study uh, things like individual differences, developmental psychology, and their cognitive introductions to research bits of social psychology, developmental again, more individual differences, all of those elements that I've kind of spoken about in the uh, what you typically do in psychology courses. There's also a module in there called performance psychology. Now that's just for the, the BSc cohort and that's about how, how you actually apply the other stuff that you're learning to help people to achieve what they want to achieve. So these are performance contexts, could be sport, could be work, could be performing arts, but where people are in these contexts where you have to be able to perform as well as you can and that's your goal, how can we help people to do that? So you study that straight away. You'll also notice that there's skills for study and work in the first year there as well, because it's an incredibly useful module that all students in the arts faculty um, do because it helps you to learn uh, how you best learn. When you move into the second year, the first semester, you've got um, uh, again some conceptual and historical issues, some critical perspectives. So we're starting not just to accept our current level of knowledge, but go, OK, but what don't we know? There's also work and organisation psychology. You want to start being able to apply the things you do to workplaces, to organisations, to cultures. So you'll have experiences of being in different cultures, uh, your family, your school, if you have a part time job, if you play for a sports team, all of these are different cultures. OK. And you have this organisational feel to it. Um, and it's interesting about the, the leadership and the dynamics within that have a huge effect on how we feel and how much enjoyment and fulfillment we get out of that. There's also an option to undertake a, an elective from, from elsewhere in the, in the faculty there. Then there's these really two interesting bits. You don't find these in many psychology courses. Semester two of year two and semester one of year three. So that's a calendar year. There's two modules that are called organisational psychology in practice. They're placement based. So on those modules, and we'll help source the placement, um, you will go and complete a project in a workplace. It might be in the public sector, might be in the private sector, might be at a charity. Um, it might focus on leadership. It might focus on the organisational culture. It might focus on how you can um, measure the strengths of the staff uh, or identify some of the vulnerabilities and areas that they need to develop. But you'll be doing hands on something that has a real life use. It's a fantastic experience. So then you come back from that and you might do it in, in two different placement based ones or you might do a project that runs for the whole calendar year. You still get the summer off, don't worry about that. Um, 
you can also choose to study abroad for one of those semesters if you if you wish to. Um, in the second half of year three, uh, you have a, a module called Psychology of Applied Settings. So that's reflecting on the skills you've developed. Um, and this is really important because if, if we're going to lecture you around psychology, psychology is about you as an individual. Okay, So part of my goal for you in four years of studying psychology is that you develop into the kind of person that you want to be. You develop into some, the, the kind of person that you really like and you're enjoying life, OK? So we have some of these modules, such as psychology of applied settings, that helps you to reflect on your own experiences and understand your own personal development. There. It might be from a professional point of view, or it might just be you as a person and reflecting on like, how you've grown over this time. We also have things like biological basis in there, more research methods. We have psychopathology, uh, which is essentially how we how we go about recognizing things like um, various disorders. Um, so disorders around identity, depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, um, personality disorders, all those kind of things. And then you can choose an elective and you can see these are sort of context specific whether they're in health or motivation or education or sport or coaching psychology, or which is more work based. Then you get into the final year, you undertake a dissertation and that final year, the research project becomes quite a large piece of it. You have to design a project, you collect data, you analyse that data, you present that data. Now, with our existing courses, I think for four years running now, um, one of our students has won best presentation at the, the Psychological Society of Ireland sort of student annual congress. Um, so we we love it when students go and present their own work to other to other students and psychologists in the country with great track record of them doing really well. You'll also see there's modules like um, applied social psychology. That gives you a sense of where you're going throughout the degree. You start off understanding um, some of the important experiments that have happened in the past and some of the basic theories of psychology. But by the time we get you to the final year, we don't just want you to say, oh, I know about these theories. We want you to think, OK, so how can that influence change in the real world? So think about social some of the major social issues there are. Think about people's um, behaviour towards climate change and sustainable practices and those kind of things. It's one thing to understand the theory, but by the end of your degree, we want you to think, OK, so what, what do governments and individuals need to do to encourage people to act in, in a more sustainable manner? And then you've also got, you'll see that the very final semester, three of your five modules are electives. And there's a strong reason for that is by then you'll have a real grasp of what context you're really interested in. If you want to get into health psychology because you fancy going down a clinical route further on, you can choose that. If you want to be an educational psychologist, then again, it gives you an opportunity to say, I actually, I think doing things around developmental and educational psychology be most useful for me at this point. I would also, it'd be remiss of me not to talk about our staff. Um, for me, it's uh, the greatest strength of any institution is its staff. Um, because ultimately, once you once you peel away the, the bricks and mortar of the buildings, which we kind of have done for the last year and a half, you're left with people. And we have really experienced people. They're the creators of knowledge. They're all research active. OK, and that's because that's that's kind of what university level institutions do. We have two main functions. One is teaching people stuff, but also, universities are responsible for generating knowledge in the first place. That's how we move forward. So we have to do research and we all do that. 
in my experience, and I've worked at, at three universities in England before before coming over here. Um, and this this is actually across the board. It's not just psychology, but the quality of lecturers as teachers here is superb. They're fantastic. I suppose that's influenced by the history of the place as well. And most importantly, we're incredibly supportive. OK, um, hey, we're trained in trying to understand people. So it wouldn't be very good if we uh, if we didn't understand our students. Facilities, um, you can pick up more information. I think we have some stuff online, but yeah, with various lab facilities um, for collecting data, for analysing data, those kind of things. Um, and we've also a huge database of, of journals as well that you can access so you can have uh, real sort of cutting edge knowledge. And psychology moves quickly, right? Things that we thought were true 20 years ago, we've moved on. We know so much more now. And the things we know now will probably have changed a hell of a lot in another 20 years. And finally, do you know, the biggest thing, the biggest reason um, I'd recommend uh, the, this place is the experiences that you have. Because I can tell you that my favourite thing about the place is it's really nice. So when you walk around the place, you, you chat to people, people are so friendly. Um, at Mary Immaculate College and so I'd be very confident you'll have some fantastic experiences and meet you know lifelong friends who knows maybe even future future wives or husbands uh, it can always happen as well.